Hey everyone, welcome to my new production challenge. Back in 2020, I did a production challenge and built a 2800 production city. This time I'll try to outdo that. Like my first production challenge, this setup will revolve around Magnus's vertical integration promotion, which allows multiple factories and power plants to add production to a single city. But while we squeezed in 40 plus factories and power plants in range in my first challenge, this time we'll fit in over 60. We can do this by exploiting a weird Civ mechanic. The ability to settle cities closer if they're on different land masses. Normally you can only settle cities four plus tiles apart, but for whatever reason cities can be three tiles apart if they're on separate land masses. But this means we'll have to take special care to prevent cities from blocking other cities' districts. All the extra coast also doesn't help, since most districts are required to be placed on land. We'll need to settle in specific orders to ensure cities can place their industrial zones and commercial hubs which, along with harbors, form our key districts. For this complex and tedious process, I have to thank Platypus and Gumball, two genuine civ extraordinaires, for engineering the layout and settling order, little of which I've changed in this final version. In my first production challenge, I was under the impression that game modes didn't work with custom maps. But turns out they mostly do work, so this time we'll be using the Owls and Minerva Secret Society to basically double our trade route capacity. We'll get all the multiplying wonders we got in the first challenge, Kilwa, Rur, Amundsen, as well as Casa, which, along with the Colonial Taxes policy card, will amplify our final result. Speaking of policy cards, we'll also use a special late game Dark Age card, Robber Barons, to further increase our production. Since my first challenge, we got lucky with the release of the new Age of Steam Victoria, whose huge production boosts will gladly exploit. For those who are curious, more strategic details are included at the end of this video. Lastly, everything in this challenge was performed without any cheats or gameplay changing mods. You'll notice a few popular UI mods, but everything I do in this challenge is completely possible with just the Civ 6 anthology. Without further delay, let's get into this challenge. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy content like this, and join my Discord at the link in the description. Here's our start. So we have a really awesome start, obviously, some deer with faith on them. So there must be something hiding behind there. We've got a four food base tile we can settle on. So let's go ahead and settle in place there. And there's Matotapilla. We got a governor title. We're going to save that for Amani. And I'm going to avoid picking up the tribal villages here until I get scouts and until I get the survey card. Because we want to get as many promoted scouts as we can. But we do want to send this warrior down south. And let's open up with a scout, and we're gonna meet our first city-state, Auckland. Awesome. And then we get into the Owls of Minerva too. So this is what we're gonna use our first governor title for. We want to take Amani, put her into Auckland. Our two early expands are gonna have, are gonna be working um, coast tiles. And a lot of our cities are, are just gonna be working coastal tiles. So we want to have decent tiles to work. And we just met a cod. Red city state is always good to meet early. It gives you an extra production toward units. And next, let's go ahead and build a settler. And now we've soothed Auckland, so that's good. And we've also met a few more city states. There's animal husbandry, so we have a couple horses here. Really nice tiles with God of Craftsmen, which will be our pantheon. These are going to be amazing. Next, let's research astrology. We want to get a holy site. First settler is out, so let's go ahead and settle up north here. We're going to be settling on that gypsum. And let's go ahead and get another scout real quick here, just two turns. Finished our scout, let's go ahead and get another settler. And we just finished Code of Laws, so let's put in Survey. We already have Faith, so we don't need God King. Let's put in Urban Planning, a little more production. And settling our second city right here. Auckland is nice, giving giving that tile a little extra production. And let's see what we get here in the Tribal Village. Free Builder, nice, nice, I was hoping for that. Okay, so let's improve the horses. And we've now met all eight red city states here. These are each giving one production toward units to the capital. So even though we're only three population, we're at 26 production. And time to pick our pantheon. So let's go ahead and take God of Craftsmen. This is important for the final result. Our next settler is out. So let's go ahead. We, there's a spot out here that we want to settle to the right. So let's start walking there. Going to be a little bit of a walk. And let's go ahead and buy this tile. We want to put our holy site right here every scout we want to have this promotion alpine and no more we don't really need any more promotions than that on this map so each scout is going to pick up two tribal villages finished our monument let's go ahead and get another scout here we need to get these tribal villages let's get our holy site next here 
And we now have enough gold to finally buy this tile. I got a little gold from a tribal village, so that was helpful. Place this holy site down right there. We finished our holy site. Let's go ahead and get a shrine next in this city. Time to settle our third city right here. Next, we'll do a trader here in the capital. Let's go ahead and chop the monument here. Place the holy site down right there. And now we can finally pick up this tribal village. Rebuilder, beautiful. Next, governor promotion. I think we're gonna go ahead and take Magnus right now. We wanna get him promoted to provision and then pump out a bunch of settlers in this city. Put him in London. First trader, let's go ahead and send from this city. This city's really lacking food. And we'll just send this trader out right back to London. Let's get one more scout out of here. There's some tribal villages we want to find. We also want to scout this area out. And then let's go ahead and put in the settler card right now because we're about to start making settlers after this. And next governor promotion, let's go ahead and promote Magnus to provision. We want our gov plaza right here. Let's go ahead and buy this tile. And I think this is a discounted gov government plaza. We finished two districts and we have two district types unlocked. So that means we get one discounted district. Just unlocked Celestial Navigation, so now we can place our dockyards. Let's go ahead and chop here. Should get us to seven population, almost. And we want a dark dockyard right here. Yeah, let's chop this. That gets us the population we need. And now this, I think, is a discounted dockyard, so we can place that. Governor title. I think we can now take the Owls. Let's join the Owls of Minerva. They're going to allow us to double up our trade route capacity per city since every city is going to have both a harbor and a commercial hub. And now we get an extra economic slot. And whenever we send a trade route to a city state, we get an envoy. And we can get at a second discounted dockyard right here. So we'll place that. And we just unlocked our tier one government. So let's go ahead and take autocracy. Technically to maximize the production in this challenge, we're gonna, we're gonna need the autocratic legacy card. Let's start with these policies here. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and seize Johannesburg. So now, now we're getting plus one production for every improved resource type. And we just got our, our profit. So let's take that. And let's go ahead and found our religion, duckism. And our beliefs. So we want to take work ethic. And then I think we'll also take religious colonization so that our new cities start with the religion. We're going to be settling a lot of cities quickly. If we don't take this, it's going to be hard to spread our religion. And there we go. There is duckism. Let's settle our fourth city right here. And another settler finish. This one's going to go all the way to the right. And now that's sort of like our first wave of settlers. From now on, we're going to need shipbuilding to be able to settle more. Now that we finished our first couple lighthouses, we need to get traders out. We really need to start trading with the city states to try to extend our range. Let's send a trade route to Singapore here. Let's go ahead and get our first industry right here. This fur industry is going to give an extra 30% production towards settlers, which is going to be huge. This city is going to be really important for pumping out settlers. We now have the population to place our first commercial hub. Let's go ahead and place that right here in Birmingham. And let's send the trade route to Granada. And here's our sixth city right here. We got our two boats. Let's go ahead and get Warlord's Throne. So this is going to be our, our tier one building just to get that 20% bonus production at the very end of the game. We're gonna conquer a city and then boost our production by 20%. And we're about to meet another city state here. There's our Ma. We did not get a first meet on that, okay. Another one out here too. I think we can meet this one with our scout. There's Chinggeti, okay, awesome. Not a first meet on that one either. We wanna suze that as soon as possible. We finished our, our government building, let's Go ahead and switch governments now into Classical Republic. A little bit of a better government. We have Autocratic Legacy locked in, so that's good. Let's do Diplomatic League. Let's do Scripture. This is also production, since we have work ethic. Send to Chinggeti. And I think that one's just worth choosing, because this is going to give us faith on our trade routes. Yeah, so a good amount of faith really boosts us quite a bit. New governor title, let's take Pingala now and let's put him in probably our biggest city. It looks like Birmingham. And here is our golden age, classical era. We're gonna take monumentality. We wanna focus on expanding. We just finished our first temple. So let's go ahead and buy the apostle. Let's evangelize our belief. And we're gonna go ahead and take pilgrimage here. Plus two faith for every city following this religion. We have 
like six cities following it, so that's a good amount of faith. And now we can start working on settlers in this city. And let's get an industry here as well. This will give extra growth in housing. If we make products, we can use that in our main city. Let's go ahead and finish evangelizing. Let's buy another apostle. Here is city number seven. And we've unlocked the mystic please. He gives an extra 20% production toward naval range units. And let's evangelize our belief again. Let's take meeting house. This is going to make a holy site in our main city be slightly better than a mine. Now the capital can go ahead and place its commercial hub right here. New governor title. Let's take connoisseur for Pingala. Boost our culture. Settling city number eight right here. And settling city number nine. We've unlocked our first merchant, so we'll go ahead and take that. Now we do have a little bit of competition here. Somebody's generating a little bit of uh, like one merchant point per turn. Um, this one we're gonna we're gonna be saving merchants like this for corporations. Here's apprenticeships, so and now we can start making industrial zones. A little more production in our mines as well. And I'm basically just using my gold now to buy these tiles. We can chop these into settlers, and now let's go ahead and chop. We finally met our first neighbor. They're down in the corner down here. Now we can finally settle our main city. This is where all our production is gonna be. Oh, it looks like we've had some fires here. It's disaster level zero, surprisingly. So I guess this is just a gift. When I summarize the production, I'm gonna try to call out how much of it is rela related to that. Cause I, I didn't want it to involve that. I wanted it all to be around the setup. We can recruit Leap Erickson now, so that'll allow our naval units to cross ocean tiles. It won't allow our land units to, so we're not going to be able to explore the other land, but at least we can get our naval units up to the coast and hopefully meet some more city-states. So we'll go ahead and use Leaf Erickson. Now we can move up. We met Muscat here, and there's Zanzibar. Looks like we can already trade with Muscat, so let's go ahead and send there. That'll also boost our gold, giving us an envoy there. Now that we have an AI to trade with, let's go ahead and trade off our extra luxuries. Also, let's promote Pingala here to Researcher. And we're working on a bunch of harbors, so let's go ahead and take out the scripture card and put in Veterancy. And we have Hunza in the game. That's going to be really important. Plus one gold for every five tiles that a trade route travels. And we have Mogadishu down here. Another gold city-state. And we have Venice here. Now that we have the 30% card in, it's going to go obsolete at Feudalism. So we need to use that card to build pre-build builders. And then when we hit Feudalism, we'll unlock the Serfdom card, plug that in, and we can actually finish the builders. This city is up to one turn on a builder. So we'll switch to something else. Let's get a Wales industry here. So this will give us 30% production toward military units. Do that. And he accepted our friendship. Okay, so that's good because we need allies to trade with. And another Canada. The reason we chose Canada is so that they can't attack city-states because we need all these city-states in the game. And let's go ahead and chop this fish right here to grow. Then we can put down our dockyard right there. That's That opens up a bunch of trade routes. Let's send to Zanzibar. That'll give us an envoy there too. Ideally, I would have the double send card in right now, but that's all right. Here's a trader merchant, let's take that. Let's go ahead and rename our main city, Duckopolis, there we go. Let's send to Venice here, almost 300 gold per turn, it's good. And we met the, a third Canada, and we got a second friendship, very good. And here is Bandar Brunei, another gold city state. And yet another Canada, and here is feudalism. Okay, so now all those builders that we have on one turn, we can finish. We'll go ahead and switch to those, put in the serfdom card there and we just got a third friendship so that's good let's put colossus right here that'll give us an extra trade route and let's put an industrial zone right here for this city just unlocked an admiral that gives a trade route so we'll take that now that we've finished our builders that we had started building now we can buy them let's go ahead and use this admiral here for this city plus two gold uh for foreign trade routes to this city and that's going to make this city look a little bit more attractive. Maybe I'm hoping the AI will trade to it with Whistlebonkin and that'll increase our production. So we'll use that, get the free trader too. Now let's start on Mausoleum here. Now in our main city, let's go ahead and get a holy site. We have a really good one right here next to Great Barrier Reef. This is going to give a little bit more production than a mine will with Meeting House. Here's another trader merchant. Now the capital can finally place its industrial zone, it'll be right here, 12 tiles away from our main city, but with an engineer that'll actually reach. 
So the regional buildings there will add production to our main city. Just unlocked our tier two government. So let's get into monarchy. Let's go ahead and put the wonder card in here since we're working on mausoleum. And we got a fourth friendship. Settling our northern city up here. We have a nice island with a lot of production. So this will be good. This is where we're going to build Ammons and Scott. So let's settle there. Here's mausoleum. So now our engineers are going to have an extra charge. Now we're going to build Grandmaster's Chapel and then we'll get back to making settlers. Let's get a an ivory industry up here. 30% production toward military units. Another trade route merchant here. Let's go ahead and take that. Trade out to city states now grant two faith. We have a lot of trade outs to city states. So let's use that. Yeah, it's a nice boost to our faith. Let's use our new governor title on Pingala. Double great people points in his city. Let's go for a two turn oracle here. This could be good. It's just annoying when AI gets this. And then one of them has like a decent number of great people points. Yeah, let's go ahead and put Oracle right here. All right, we got Oracle. You know what? Let's go for Temple of Artemis too. We've got a spot for right here. It hits five, gives us five amenities. That would be pretty good in this city. This is kind of a key city. Here's Temple of Artemis. And there's Colossus too. Beautiful. So we get an extra trade route from that. Let's take this engineer here, two charges of this, it'll uh, give our main city something to do as it waits for population. We'll be able to build districts right away. We just finished machinery, let's go ahead and start on Kilwa. We're gonna put Kilwa right here, and let's start building that. And then we'll use this engineer here. Maybe we get the commercial hub first, and then Kilwa. Let's place our encampment here in this city. And the encampment's gonna have the barracks, which will give a little bit of housing, help the city grow, because we're sort of housing blocked at the moment. Now we've unlocked cartography. So we can start uh, sending all our land units across to start exploring. And then also the nice thing about cartography is how much gold it gives us. It gives us quite a bit of gold because it increases how much gold our fishing boats generate. Now that we finish our commercial hub, we can use uh, this trade route merchant on this. A little more gold. Let's get our encampment done. We can also use Marco Polo here. Free trader. And we finally reached a thousand gold per turn. Now let's start building Great Zimbabwe here. That'll give us another trade route. The AI just unlocked alliances, so let's get that. Let's get a research alliance with this one. Beautiful. And then that should give us, yeah, this diplomatic service. And let's go ahead and put in Whistlebonk, and that applies to city-state trade routes as well. A lot of food and production for our main city. And this is now our 20th city, and we've now built our last settler. Now we're going to be purchasing settlers. Our goal is getting high enough to be able to buy one every two or three turns. Let's buy one more out of here, and then let's transfer Magnus now to his ultimate resting place, Duckopolis. Now this city is going to work on Casa, the, the wonder. We're going to take out the settler card, put in Gothic architecture, because we're going to be building a few wonders here. And then in this city, we're going to work on Forbidden City. London will build Casa. The Forbidden City is going to give us an extra policy slot. We There's a bunch of cards we need by the end. Casa is going to increase our main city's production by 15% because it's on a a foreign continent from our capital. That's why the capital shouldn't be the, the main production city. And we just met another Canada. So we want to clear the fog and start trading with all of these. Place our Diplo Quarter now. Diplo Quarter is going here. It's going to help the city get a little bit more production. Let's get our second alliance here. Maybe get a cultural alliance. We got our first wonder engineer. Let's take that. Probably use that on Forbidden City. Now we've entered the medieval era. We'll take another monumentality and now we can actually promote the owls. So let's get ritual. So this allows us to build a gilded vault and then that allows you to double up on trade routes per city when you have both a harbor and market. Here's our first world congress. Let's go ahead and double production toward commercial hub. That's sort of the thing that we're being contested on most heavily merchants. Looks like we have a lot of marble. Let's go ahead and vote that up for the amenities, that could be really good. Okay, we got Coco, no amenities. That's a little sad, but 100% commercial hub. Until now, I've mainly been starting with harbors into commercials into industrials, but I think now we should probably do 
industrials and commercials first. Like this city needs to do an industrial here. We don't want to delay, so we we're going to have a city right here. We don't want to delay these kinds of cities too long or we risk not being able to finish this by the time robber barons expires. Place the industrial zone right there. We got a big turn here. Three key wonders finishing at the same time. All of the land There's Casa. Here's Forbidden City. And here's Kilwa. So this is going to give 30% more production to that city. And then 15% more empire-wide. At least when building districts and buildings or military units. Because we have suzerain of at least two orange city-states and at least two red city-states. We've now passed 100 production mark with uh, Kilwa and Kasa. Straight up to 140 production when we're working on buildings. To get the full effect of Kilwa, we need to soothe our Ma. So let's go ahead and do that. And now that really increases our faith. And now we can finally place our beautiful plus eight campus here in the capital. Let's go ahead and do that. We have a big milestone here. We've finally unlocked a foreign trade route. Here's Great Zimbabwe. That's another trade route capacity. All right, let's get out of the wonder card now. Put in naval infrastructure. That'll be really good as we get shipyards. We got another Wonder Engineer, Imhotep. Time to do our industrial zone right here. More trade routes available this time. This is the first one I think to the left that, that's been available. That's good. And the final Canada, here they are. Now we've met everybody on the map. We finally hit 2000 gold per turn. Let's get a sugar industry up here. Okay, let's Suze Muscat and Bandar Brunei, and let's see what that does to our gold. Yeah, almost 2,500 per turn. Here is city number 30. Here's industrialization. So that's really good. We get better mines. We get to build factories and Auckland becomes even better. It gives us an extra production. We can now one turn our factory and we're up to 277 production. I don't want climate change to start flooding my tiles. So we're going to hold off on the coal plants. Basically every city is going to have a nuclear plant anyway. So they can just hold off until then. We're low on housing. Let's use this engineer, James of St. George. He builds medieval walls. We already have ancient walls, but medieval will give us an extra housing. Looks like we can build Angkor Wat. Let's go ahead and do that. We have almost our first wave of settlers all settled and we need to get them to four population before we settle other cities. Let's just do it right here. We're ready to settle the last of this wave of cities. Going forward, the ordering of city settling is gonna be really important. We need to make sure all of these cities that we've settled now, all 34, there's 34 of them. They, they need to have their commercial hubs and their industrial zones all placed before we settle other cities. We just finished colonialism, so now our fishing boats are gonna get plus one production, looking much better. Now let's go for Potala Palace right here. This is just to get another policy slot. Here is Angkor Wat. And here is Patala Palace. Okay, now it's time to play this card. Colonial Taxes plus 159 production and plus 600 gold. We can take skyscrapers out. I think we'll put triangular trade back in for now. And this gets us over 400 production. Turn 140, we're now up to 4,000 gold per turn. Okay, here we probably need to do the entertainment complex. I was budgeting out my amenities and we're gonna be very close if we don't have a stadium in range of our main city. We need to be ecstatic eventually here. This is 12 tiles out, but there is an engineer. You can extend that to the entertainment complex right there. Here's Ibn Khaldun. We're gonna get an extra 8% production from him. Here is the first of the next wave of cities to be settled. So with cities like this, you have to be careful to settle them after other cities have placed their districts. You also have to worry about the tiles surrounding the city blocking you from accessing tiles from another city that would normally be accessible. For this part, I have to thank Platypus and Gumball. They did most of this ordering. Big thanks to them. So I think we're clear to settle this. Let's settle it. And we have an artifact right where we need to place our industrial zone. So let's, let's buy one archeologist. Let's go ahead and start making some water parks in some of these cities with 10 population. We'll just do them in like the first ring so we don't mess anything up. Go ahead and crush 
that right there. Let's use Hunza. I'm curious how much gold this is gonna give us. Yeah, wow, it was like 700 gold. We've now reached 5,000 gold per turn, just three turns after we hit 4,000. Here's Filippo. He can help us build one of our late game wonders. Okay, finally we can clear this tile and then go ahead and put down this city's industrial zone, just like that. Here's John Spilsbury. He'll give us give us some amenities. Here's Leonardo da Vinci. This will be a lot of culture, and we have two charges of him too. Just finished our water park here. Let's go ahead and buy the buildings and buy the aquarium. Here's a good example of the chain settling. So this city had to be settled after these cities place districts. This city has to be settled after this one places its district here. So there's like a chain going. Here's our second charge of Da Vinci. Let's check our culture next. Let's see, 460, nice. We are up to 40 cities now. Easily able to buy one settler per turn. We're at 6,000 gold per turn. An interesting situation here that I didn't really foresee. This city can't get any other tiles to work, so it's not gonna grow. We needed to get it to seven population at some point. So let's, let's do a couple trade routes here. We can also put farms down, I guess, temporarily here. We have a couple engineers that we brought over here. Let's start making a railroad sort of just across the map. We're gonna have to settle cities for the AI and then gift those cities to them so that we can trade. We, we will have to definitely settle cities for the AI because they won't have enough to match our trade route capacity. And this railroad will help us move settlers across the map faster. Looks like we've hit 500 production here in Duckopolis. We've just reached economics, so now we can start on Big Ben. Also unlock stock exchanges and corporations. So now we can start actually using these merchants. Let's do Big Ben right here. This will give us an extra economics slot. And we'll go ahead and use Filippo on that. And let's get our corporation here. Call it Duckopolis Wales. That's giving us 13 production. Pretty nice. Let's go ahead and get our Ivory Corporation right here. Fur Corporation here in the capital. Honey Corporation in Sheffield. Sugar Corporation. Marble Corporation in Plymouth. Gypsum Corporation in Manchester. And our new corporations, let's start making some products here, like ivory product. We could probably make some uh, whales products here, make a honey product there. We have a new Congress, so our old production toward commercial hub buildings expired. Let's go ahead and vote A here for ourselves, get an extra trade route, vote for ourselves here. And we got it, good stuff, both of them. And let's go ahead and finish Big Ben. It looks like we can't place our commercial hub here. So I overlooked this when I was uh, when I was doing the layout. I caught this one or two other times. I don't know how I missed it on this one. We need to put our commercial hub right here in Chicago, but there, it's blocked by other districts. And then these tiles are in the first ring of this city, which this city was settled very early. This one we could have delayed, but then it has districts on this island. It would involve a lot of like shifting around and I'm not even sure if it's possible. We'll miss one trade route, but not a big deal. We got our first whales product, extra 30% production toward units. We just finished blight. So now we can put down our aerodrome right here. Yeah, let's put that down and we can settle this city now. Just to explain this aerodrome, this city would steal this tile if this aerodrome wasn't here. That's why we built it. So we would be getting zero production out of this. It won't be as good as a mine by the end of the game, but it's better than nothing. We just finished a honey product. Let's go ahead and put that into Duckopolis. That's gonna help us grow. All right, looks like this city also can't get a commercial hub. We're just blocked off. Here. The commercial hub would need to go right here. We, we just can't get to that tile. We could have settled the city first before this one, but then this city wouldn't get its commercial hub. Its, its commercial hub is right here. Now, there might be a way to do it. It might involve not settling this, but this was like one of our very first cities. But it's fine. Just another trade route that we'll miss. And we have won the game, culture victory. We can just do one more turn. Now we can place our campus up here. This city is gonna build Amundsen Scott, so we need a campus here. Put the campus right there next to the reefs. Now we just got the economic union card, so we combine both of our commercial and harbor adjacency cards. Yeah, we'll do invention here. Get engineers. We've had a successful spy mission, 64 gold. 
We just got suffrage, so now we can get into our tier 3 government. Democracy is going to give our trade routes plus 4 food and plus 4 production. The new deal card will help our cities be happier. We'll go ahead and do a 5 year plan as well. Yeah, now we have a few happy cities at least. And we just got Eiffel. Wonder production. We're up to 770 production when making buildings. Just got chemistry, so now we can do a few research labs. I'm not going to do too many, but I probably do want a little bit more science to speed through the, the tech tree. In this city, let's go ahead and build Alhambra. This will give us an extra military slot. We just settled this city. This is going to be our canal city. We're going to have a canal right here, and it's going to buff this industrial zone. In a previous playthrough, like over a year ago, I had the worst experience with this. I had the canal placed, but I delayed actually building it. And I think I put a dis maybe a harbor here, and it wouldn't let me finish the canal. But this time we're ready. This time we have military engineers. We're just going to go ahead and build this right away. We're also going to do an aqueduct here. And just a couple days ago, I was doing this playthrough, and it was around turn 137, I think, when I realized I, I didn't have this river extending this far. It was only like right here, so I couldn't do an aqueduct right here. I had to edit the map and completely start over, but it works this time. So yeah, we have the aqueduct going there. Here's another city. It's similar to, to these others that we missed, like the missed commercials here and here, but I purposely left this tile open by shifting a few cities districts over. Originally I was gonna have a district here from another city and then I wouldn't be able to, to reach this tile. But thanks to this empty tile, we can reach up here. And this is where our commercial hub goes. I don't know for sure if it would work like this on these other cities because the right side actually has like one extra city than the left. We could fit a city here, but it would kill like four mine tiles in the capital. The, the shifting of the districts wouldn't have worked. This may only be possible because there's a city that would normally be here that isn't. And now that we've placed this city, we can settle this one. And then now that we've settled this city after pre-placing this district, we need to place an industrial zone right here. It just barely reaches. Then next turn we'll be able to settle this city. It'll place its district and then we settle this one. Let's go ahead and build our tier three government building. We will be doing a little bit of war at the very end. We might as well just get war department. And finally, our last city right here. We're gonna be settling other cities for the AI, but this completes the vertical integration layout. There we go, that's the whole layout. So now we need to be buying settlers every turn. We're working on our railroads out here and then same for the other side as well. Don't ask about this. I was trying to get the ballistics boost. I forgot it had to be in your territory. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, some of the names are not uh, English names, like Albuquerque. So the game, when you use all of a Civ's given names for cities, it'll start over in alphabetical order at the first Civ, which alphabetically is America. Jacksonville, Las Vegas, <laughs> definitely not in England. And we have entered the Renaissance era. So Renaissance, we can take another Monumentality. Everything and here is Alhambra, is so it's an extra red so policy slot. And we now have all of the wonders that give policy slots, which is pretty cool. We can put Veterancy there and then place something else. I think this one, yeah, let's do the Merchant one here. This unlocked a few turns back. And then we, we unlocked Stadiums, so we need to buy a Stadium right here. Go ahead and buy that. We also can buy stadium in this city. And we now have seaports. This will give us even more gold. Let's just go all out. Let's get our seaports built. We actually have a spot for Estadio. That is actually what we probably should get. So we'll build that here. That makes me feel a lot better about the amenities because I was a little worried. The canal has finished. We have two charges of James Watt. He makes factories a little bit better. We can one turn Rear Valley. That is pretty awesome. Down right there. And we can just use Eiffel up here for Amundsen Scott, which we unlock next turn. And we just reached 10,000 gold per turn. And here is Rear Valley in one turn. There it is. Extra 20% production. Almost a thousand production. And now we can start Amundsen Scott. So this one's going to increase our production by 10%. If there's five snow tiles in a city, it's going to be 20%. So that's why we have these snow tiles here. Let's do that. Let's use the engineer. We have aquatic centered, aquatic centers now. So let's go ahead and buy that. 
And now we're finally happy in the city and we hit a thousand production. Here's Amundsen and Scott. There's the little penguins. There's one of them right there. There's the second one. And there's the third one. That gets us to about 1200 production here. We just finished our aqueduct here now. Up to 12 adjacency with the card. Okay, let's go ahead and try settling a city for the AI. So we're gonna settle. So let's go ahead and gift to this guy. Give the gift. Let's go for the airport here in the main city. Gives a little more production. This is a little weird. So last turn I I gifted this city and I can't seem to trade to it. I don't know why. Yeah, we've got Duckopolis to Kingston here. Hopefully that corrects because that could kind of mess everything up. Okay, let's try another city. We're gonna settle here. Yeah, so I settled this. Doesn't let me trade to it. Here's a Stadio. So now plus two amenities in all of our cities. And sure enough, for the first time here in Duckopolis, we are ecstatic. There's combined arms. Here is our uranium. So now we're going to change all of these to be mines, uranium mines. And now our production is going to be crazy. Let's put in e-commerce. That's a lot of production on our trade routes. And here is Venetian Arsenal. I decided to build this just because if we want to stack up as much production as possible into maybe like a naval range units or something, then It'll be cool to have that production and then be able to make two of whatever it is that we're making. Let's take a look at our trade routes now. Our trade routes have like eight to nine production each. Some of them 11. Here is Nikola Tesla. So this will allow these two outer cities, London and Blackburn, their industrial zones are 12 tiles from our main city. It'll allow both of the industrial zones to hit the main city. Mexico City gets them to 9 tile range, and then the, this guy basically gets those 2 to 12 tiles. We just unlocked our tier 4 government, Corporate Libertarianism, which will give our, our main city an extra 20% production, because it has both a commercial hub and encampment. But let's wait a little bit to get into it, because we're going to lose the New Deal card when we switch out of democracy, and that means we'll fall below ecstatic. Eventually, we're going to have engineers that will give us amenities to replace that. We just unlocked nuclear plants, but we're actually going to delay them because they can have radioactive disasters. We want to delay those till the very end of the game, so we're not going to actually build those now. Let's go ahead and one turn the Manhattan Project. Here's Oxford. Not really necessary, but figured why not. Whatever happened just now just unlocked all the trade routes. A lot of these cities are ones that I settled for the AI. And that gets us over 2,000 production. We're up to 20,000 gold per turn now. We just got global warming mitigation. So this is important because it has the carbon recapture project. This is what we need to run to prevent flooding. I'm not sure if the map is actually gonna flood. It's not letting me build flood barriers. Just to be safe, let's start doing carbon recapture projects here in, in our main city. Still no climate change yet. Another amenity merchant, this is good. We just researched smart, smart materials, which gives us an extra one production on these mines. So now our mines are as good as they're gonna get. Now we did get two extra production on a few of them from the forest fire. This one is 15 production. That's like our best mine. Few that were never affected by the fire and that's up here. So 13. So 13 production is what I was planning. We have reached 3000 production. So we've outdone my first production challenge. We have another amenity merchant. And we have the engineer Jane Drew. She's really important for making sure that our main city is ecstatic. She's got two charges, so three amenities for this city. Also some housing. Now we don't want to grow too much. I've actually stopped the growth here by removing products. Let's go ahead and one turn Operation Ivy. Okay, right now we're running the new deal card, which is really nice, but we're going to lose it when we switch governments. Right now it's basically just inflating my population here long term while not permanently providing the amenities so let's get into corporate libertarianism this is this is going to be our final government production is up to 3200 here's an important engineer for amenities this one has three charges so that's three amenities we have finally connected our railroad all the way across or at least from one coast to the other using supply convoys helps otherwise military engineers can't move onto a hill and then place a railroad since they only have two movement. Another trade route merchant here. Let's take this. Here's an admiral that gives 20% production toward naval raider units. Climate change is starting to pick up a little bit. Nine turns till the next polar ice melt. Now we should, it looks like we're burning 
coal. I don't know how we're burning this, but because we I don't think we have any, have any coal plants, but let's get some nuclear plants and we'll just have to keep reactivating them so we don't have any disasters. Buy a few new nuclear plants to cover all of our cities. Congress. Okay, we have duplicates of luxury granting amenities. Let's go for marble. We have a few copies of that. Double production toward buildings in this district. I think we're pretty much all done with our buildings and we can just buy them. We don't want the no buildings though. And diamonds, no amenities. Okay, that's too bad. Double production toward industrial zone. We got that. That's good. Let's take a look at our great people points. We're starting to switch to carbon recapture. So this is probably around the maximum that we'll get. So we, we hit about a thousand on each merchant and engineer points. Entering the industrial era, so now no more monumentality. We just bought a bunch of settlers with faith. We now have more than enough settlers to settle for the AI. So on our golden age, I could see doing either Hicksunt Draconis or reform the coinage. Yeah, actually, let's probably do Hicksunt. That's gonna help with loyalty. We've had some cities rebel that we settled for the AI. We don't want that. We want them to start with population so they don't rebel. So I think that's good. Yeah, that looks good there. And since we're now in the industrial era, we've unlocked the, the third promotion for the owls. So we get an extra wild card slot, plus two spy capacity, and we get plus one amenity when a spy is in our territory. I just did a search for seaports, factories, and gilded vaults. We have all of them built. So 65 cities we have in our vertical integration layout. We have 65 seaports, 65 factories, and 63 gilded vaults only because we missed two commercial hubs. So we're all set on our buildings. We just, at the end, we're gonna be buying uh, nuclear plants. And here is Joseph Paxton. So he's gonna make our entertainment complex district uh, actually reach our main city, which it isn't yet. And this is gonna give us a lot of amenities. We're gonna get amenities from the zoo, the stadium, and then also Paxton himself gives two extra amenities. Use him, yep. Plus nine, beautiful. And that gets us to 4,000 production. Here's another amenity merchant, provides two perfume. We've settled pretty much all the cities we need for the AI. This was really tedious. Most of my railroads were not even used. Here's my army of military engineers. Now that we have all the merchants and engineers, we'll just run carbon recapture. And now that there are no more merchants or engineers, we can go ahead and play autocratic legacy. And we have entered the modern era. Another golden age. This needs to be our last golden age. So now the whole challenge will be to generate as little era score as possible. We now have almost all of our trade routes out of our main city. 136 is our max capacity. World Congress, we've got uh, the luxury resource one. Looks like the AI has zero favor. I'm not sure how, how that happened, but um, let's vote up Marvel. We have three extra copies of Marvel. We don't really want growth. We want our cities to not grow, actually. So I think we will take the plus five loyalty. Okay, we got both of those, obviously. And at this point, our cities are basically just building, just doing carbon recapture. It's pretty repetitive. We've already cooled the planet by almost 20 degrees. So just to give an idea of what these turns are like right now, it's basically just carbon recapture, click, click. And then if it has a nuclear plant, one of the five that I have right now, we have to recommission that so it doesn't explode. Go to the next city, carbon recapture. You can't click very fast or it doesn't work. Oh, what's that? Click, click. All of our trade routes are now out of Duckopolis. Let's do a little check on our production before we go into the atomic era and get robber barons. We also still don't have vertical integration yet. This is just trade routes and tiles, pretty much. 4,600 production. And we also don't have our coal plant yet either, which is gonna give us a, a bonus 10%. Okay, we have only five turns till the atomic era. So we need to now denounce this Canada since we're gonna take one of their cities, get an extra 20% production boost. So let's denounce them. And now finally entering the atomic era, we have our dark age. We managed to only get six era score. Dedication doesn't matter. And we have our special card, Robber Barons. So let's go ahead and do a card check here. We need to make sure we have all the right cards in. We have five-year plan, liberalism, just for the amenities, just in case, sports media, colonial taxes, whistlebunken, e-commerce, 
autocratic legacy, democratic legacy, scripture, economic union, and finally robber barons. We have them all. We have all the cards we need. Now robber barons does decrease the amenities by two in all your cities. So we're lucky that we have an excess of amenities. We should still be ecstatic. Wow, collectivism. I literally did not even know about this card until right now. Double industrial zone adjacency bonus. Okay, that, that one is definitely going in too. We have just enough slots for that. Wow, I didn't even realize that one existed. So 4615, let's see what this does. We have 5,000, 5,095. Let's check our adjacency here. 36 adjacency. And I've also confirmed that these car cards like this, they give extra production. You don't see that production here. Let's go ahead and buy our coal plant. We want a coal plant here because they give production equal to district adjacency while the other two power plants don't. They're just fixed production. But the other cities are all gonna have nuclear plants because those give, the, their production extends to other cities. And with vertical integration, you can stack them all up. Whereas uh, the coal plant doesn't do that. So let's buy the coal plant. Now, being Age of Steam Victoria, we're gonna get an extra 10% modifier uh, for having a power plant, which we haven't gotten yet. 5377 production. There's another boost that we can get another 20% by conquering a city. Let's declare a colonial war. Decisive victory, just like that. Another 20% boost, 5,743. But we're still missing probably the biggest boost here, which is vertical integration. So this whole layout revolved around this last boost, which we're gonna do. We're gonna, I need to buy 59. I think there's still 59 power plants to buy, nuclear plants. So I'm gonna go through city by city and just buy nuclear plants. Okay, we have 63 power plants. We're missing one somewhere. Ah, uh, we found it. Last one. So that's 64 power plants. We have 65 cities in range here. Our main one has a coal plant. So 64, we're all set. We can finally promote Magnus. So this city receives production from all nearby industrial zone buildings with regional bonuses not just the first. So that's factories and nuclear plants. 8,565. That's even more than I expected for this challenge. That's quite a bit more. Okay, I went over to the next turn because I wanted to make sure all of our factories were powered. Sometimes when you buy power plants, it takes time for the power to kick in. It takes like one turn. It looks like they were all powered or, or mostly powered because it didn't change very much. But I think this, I'll, I'll probably call this our final number, 8,594. We did it. And again, that's before all the units. I'll, I'll do the calculations. We'll, we'll figure out exactly how much is being Put toward for example this nuclear sub there's one great person that we forgot it makes a little bit of a difference it won't actually show up on the production screen here but it technically will make a little bit of a difference we need to get dwight eisenhower he's gonna give us an extra five percent toward military units including ships so we'll go ahead and buy the generals and there he is yeah extra five percent toward military units but I think that's gonna, based on my preliminary calculations, we should be over 18,000 production towards ships with all multipliers. And technically, if there was a ship that was 18,000 production that we could make, we could make two of them in a single turn because of Venetian Arsenal. We've also managed to cool the cool the planet by 38 degrees Celsius, just running all the carbon recapture projects. And we didn't come this far without throwing a nuke. During the game, I didn't really have a chance to discuss all the strategic details, so I'll do that in this section. The production challenge revolves around Magnus's vertical integration promotion, which allows factories and regional power plants like oil plants and nuclear plants to add production to a single city. England is the best vertical integration sieve because it has the best factories in the game. England's factories gain plus four production when powered. The two Victorias are the best leaders for a vertical integration challenge. Age of Empire gains an extra trade route capacity for every city settled on a foreign continent, while Age of Steam gains an extra 10% production from each industrial zone building in a city. There are over 40 potential continents that can be added to a custom map, so Age of Empire can gain 40 plus trade routes. 
but I chose Age of Steam because even this can't match a 30% production boost. By settling cities on their own islands, we were able to settle them only three tiles apart rather than the typical four tile minimum distance. This allowed us to squeeze in 64 industrial zones in range of the main city, over 20 more than normally possible. Platypus was the main designer of the island layout, so a big thanks to him. Besides factories and power plants, external trade routes provided an even bigger portion of base production. Harbors and commercial hubs provided most of our trade route capacity, while the Gilded Vault, a building unique to the Owls of Minerva Secret Society, allowed almost all of our 65 cities to provide two trade route capacity each, rather than the usual limit of one per city. Colossus, Great Zimbabwe, a handful of merchants, and an admiral provided the rest of our total 136 trade route capacity. It's true we could have settled more cities to gain additional trade route capacity, but I wanted to limit myself to only settling cities with an industrial zone in range of the main city. Policy cards made our trade routes productive. Democratic Legacy, Whistlevunken, and e-commerce guaranteed a minimum of 8 production per external trade route, while the districts the AI built in their cities potentially increased our trader production even more. The island layout made district placement extra complicated. Cities lacked land tiles for industrial zones and commercial hubs and risked blocking each other's districts. Fortunately, Gumball engineered a specific settling order that would allow almost all of our cities to place all of their districts without interfering with other cities. So a big thanks to Gumball. Platypus and Gumball both helped tweak the main city's layout as well. The main city needed to work as many of the most productive tiles possible also containing certain districts and wonders which would provide additional production. Wooded Plains Hill Uranium Mines compose the majority of our workable tiles. With Age of Steam's extra two production to strategic resources, the God of Craftsmen Pantheon, which adds a production to improve strategic resources, and Rear Valley, which adds an additional production to mines, our 25 uranium mines had 13 production each before forest fires. The industrial zone was fully surrounded by strategic resource tiles, a canal, an aqueduct, and mines, giving an adjacency of 12, which was tripled by the five-year plan and collectivism policy cards. Its buildings amplified the production even more. With the high adjacency and Magnus's industrialist promotion, our coal plant provided 38 production alone. A high adjacency harbor with a shipyard provided 18 production with the economic union policy card. A holy site adjacent to the Great Barrier Reef Two woods tiles, two districts, and containing a meeting house provided 14 production with the work ethic belief and scripture policy card. The diplomatic quarter buildings provided a large source of production. The encampment and aerodrome buildings couldn't quite compete with a mine, but they came close and allowed additional cities to be settled without stealing tiles from our main city. Additional sources of production included great engineers Nikola Tesla and James Watt, industrial zone and encampment specialists, whale products, which provide two base production each, incoming traders from the AI, a water mill, autocratic legacy, and city-states. In total, our base production before multipliers was 2,737. Our percentage multipliers consisted of two categories, visible multipliers and invisible multipliers. For whatever reason, Civ only shows the effect of some multipliers in the calculated city-level production. Our visible multipliers included 20% from ecstatic citizens, increased an additional 4% with the scientist Ibn Khaldun, 20% from Ruhr Valley, 30% from Kilwa Kisiwani when making units, districts, or buildings since we were suzerain of multiple industrial and military city-states, 20% from Amundsen and Scott Research Station, 15% and 10% respectively from CASA and the Colonial Taxes Policy Card, which were the reasons our capital could not be our main production city. 20% from the corporate libertarianism government, since we had both an encampment and commercial hub in our main city. 25% from the Dark Age Policy Card Robber Barons. 20% from Warlord's Throne for conquering a city at the end. And finally, 30% from Age of Steam's extra production from industrial zone buildings, totaling a visible multiplier of 314% when combined with the base of 100%. Multiplying our base production of 2,737 by 314% gets us to 8,594, which was our final visible production in the city screen. But that's only part of the story. Invisible multipliers increased our production further. Our invisible multipliers were 20% from Great Admirals Themistocles or Chester Nimitz, respectively, when making naval range or raider units. 60% from the Whale Corporation when making military units, 
an additional 180% toward military units from having six products in our main city. Whether intended or not, products do seem to stack, as is obvious of housing products. 100% from the International Waters Policy Card when making naval units, and 5% from the Great General Dwight Eisenhower when making military units, totaling an invisible multiplier of 365% toward naval ranged or raider units. Combining our visible and invisible multipliers gets us to a total 679% multiplier or 18,584 production when making naval range or naval raider units. But if there was an 18,500 production ship we could make, we would actually be able to make two of them in a single turn with Venetian Arsenal, bringing our maximum single turn hypothetical production to over 37,000. To take it even further, we could have gotten lucky with the World Congress and received a 50% discount on building military units with the Mercenary Company's resolution. Technically, this wouldn't increase production, but only decrease the required production for units. But it's cool to imagine that if we had gotten this resolution, and if there was a 37,000 production naval unit that could be built, we could build two of them, which would sort of bring our max production to over 74,000. I had a blast with this challenge. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you.